Hi, and welcome to our small table. Today we'll be making two individual meat and potato pies. A link to the recipe can be found in the video description. Ingredients have been pre-measured. The oven is preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll be demonstrating just one of the pies since they're done the exact same way. You just do this twice. You start with ground beef. We've got half a pound here. I've taken my rings off because I knew that I would probably be getting my fingers into the beef. We're going to combine breadcrumbs, and these are breadcrumbs that I made from a loaf of bread that I made, so it makes me feel particularly accomplished to use them. Also, two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of plain ketchup. And a fourth teaspoon of salt. You're just going to want to combine these the way you would a meatloaf. We're going to use one piece of specialty equipment for this, which I don't generally do. I like to only use things that I can feel confident people have in their kitchens. But I'm also providing options for anyone who doesn't have them. Since these are pies, we need a pie pan. And since these are individual mini pies, we need two individual mini pie pans. Now, if you don't have a mini pie pan, you can use a ramekin or cocotte. You can use a custard cup. Whatever works for you that you have on hand, that's what you want to use. And you just want to press the meat into the bottom and up the sides. And this is ungreased, especially my mini pie pan is very much nonstick. It would be very unlikely for the beef to stick to it. Once this is completely filled, which I'm going to finish off camera, you're just going to stick this in to pre-bake in the oven at 375 degrees. The filling will be added after the first stage of baking has been done. So when I've done that, I will be back. Okay, the crust is pre-baked and it's out of the oven. Normally I would drain any drippings out of it. This one, I've already attempted that and there weren't really any drippings to speak of. There's a little bit of grease in the center and that's all that there is. So we're going to take our frozen mixed veggies, which have thawed, and I actually also broke them up a little bit, the green beans and the carrots because we're using a smaller pie pan and so if they're too large they won't fit. Whereas when you do this as a full size pie, there's plenty of room for even the longest green beans. You just mix them together and then transfer your potato vegetable mixture into your crust. And it's going to go back into bake again at a 375 degree oven and this time start checking it if you're using a custard cup at about four minutes it'll probably need longer but it's better to be safe than sorry and if you're going to add cheese if you're using a custard cup you're going to need to add it now if you're using a smaller dish then you can let it bake for a couple of minutes before you start adding the cheese which is what i'm going to do so i will be back once this is baked i'm going to add the cheese off camera just because i think we all know how to add cheese to potatoes i'll be back and there you have it individual meat and potato pie very similar to a cottage pie if you have any drippings after it's baked, you can pour those off or dab them up. You might have them if you've added cheese on top like I have. A good side dish for this would be a sliced tomato salad. That's a good thought. Thanks for joining me today at our small table. 
Next time our recipe will be black bean smothered sweet potatoes. Remember to check out the website which is linked in the video description. Thank you!